EA Games. Challenge everything. Hmm. In this video, I'm going to build an entire civilization from this one dot of land. Most of the time, when you play SimCity, you start off with a big forest. But I thought, that's boring. So instead, we're going to play this like it's Raft, and we're on a survival island. You need to expand to stay alive. The hardest mode in SimCity 4 starts you off with $100,000. I got to work. First off, we have to actually make the map. SimCity 4 was from 2004. We don't have any fancy building editors in this game. So instead, we're going to use Earth Science to manipulate the land masses. This tile is the most watery on the regional map. There are my old cities. Indianapolis. Audianapolis. Rytopia. And Big Sneeze. But Dot Island would be different. Forged from millions of years of the emergence of subaquatic magma pewing out of the Earth cooling, hardening, and then majestically eroding into a smooth-brained island, ready for man to seed its shores. I entered mayor mode and began. Attempt number one. The first thing we needed was power. I resolved not to pollute, because pollution is sin. No, instead I opted for these nice boy wind turbines. Mean and clean. Okay, next. The city needs people to live in it, so I zoned homes. But how would residents migrate to Dot Island? Call me a crazy city person, but my first idea was giant subway. I mean, boat terminals don't fit anyway here. Conveniently, the subway did actually work, and some crazy people were moving in. Industrial zone to work in, commercial zone to shop in, yet even more residential zones. And then I was completely out of room. Expand. Hume. The island grew, but it was also, um, completely destroyed and bankrupt. I had made the unfortunately naive mistake of forgetting that using terraforming tools in SimCity 4 is like smiting everyone in your path with an instant death earthquake. Attempt 2. Just an island full of windmills. Nope. That didn't work either. After 37 seconds, I was faced with the unfortunate realization that wind turbines, the primary inhabitants of my island, are not people. Okay, third time's the charm. How about looking at all our resources? This is a hard challenge. We have almost no land, a bit of money, but also infinite time ahead of us, and lots of space. What about instead of just taking Dot Island as face value, how about we prepare our canvas a bit more before we start painting? That can never hurt. So I grew out the edges of Dot Island enough so that when I expanded, I wouldn't destroy civilization. $15,217 later, and it was a comfortable square. And instead of bankrupting our town with wind power, this time, how about just five of them instead? I already knew I wanted to punch the town out square by square like graph paper, so I encircled my structure with avenues and added water, the lifeblood of our town. Also expensive. But as it turns out, terraforming is just a bit cheaper than expected. And if you're not accidentally destroying the entire town every five minutes, you have ample room to stay organized. No more of these hills and sandbars, rather than just a collection of huts, a residential square, a commercial row, an industry lane. I watered and piped everything, but then made the unfortunate realization that my town was again doomed to fail right from the start. Our people were dumb as a box of rocks, and they weren't even covering the city expenditures with taxes. How can I describe this? At the beginning, you're basically running down the budget, trying to generate a profit. It's like trying to land a crashing plane. What could I do for positive cash flow? Elementary school? Maybe it would bring in smarter brains. Not enough time. I had to balance the budget fast, or after only one year we'd be in a world of doo-doo. So I opened my Excel spreadsheets and began performing fiscal policy. We raised taxes on the poor and the dirty, since they couldn't pay as much as everyone else. Now we were back in the positive cash flows by, I mean, it was only six or seven simoleons a month, but it's something. What about when disaster struck, when a fire broke out? Defund the poli- I mean the fire department. It became a rallying political cry, or the less popular but more effective, destroy the fire department. Or equally effective, just let the whole block burn down. That worked too. People weren't getting educated fast enough to make a difference. So I deceptively baited manufacturing industries to settle in our town by first lowering the tax rate, coercing them in, and then raising it back up again once they were all inside. Once they were trapped, then it would be financial suicide to leave. I smackledorfed them. We cut back on expenditures. 
can't make me pay for burst pipes if there aren't any pipes to burst. And we force everyone to just drink the mysterious groundwater. I'm not saying that I'm proud, but I did what was necessary to get that city out of poverty. Even if that meant 84 years of squirreling away about $100 a month. All just to save the 67,000 needed to turn our back on our previous clean energy founding principles. That's right, forsake the wind turbines for cheaper coal power, and pour enough dirt into the ocean to establish farming on what used to be water. And so that's what we became. A community of stupid, uneducated farm people barely raising enough taxes each year to continue filling the ocean around our island with dirt. All just to make more farms, and keep filling up even more of the ocean with dirt. I'm not bragging about it, I'm saying that for the next 200 years, the local government collected more money to keep doing this. In the year 431, we'd finally filled in just about the, uh, the entire ocean with dirt. Yep, that was it. My god, it took long, but we were technically still an island. I mean, just look at it. That's an island. Never to betray our spiritual beginnings. Strangely, we had become skilled at sucking money out of farmers, and honestly, it, it only made sense to let the simulation keep running for another 200 years, because I knew what was coming next would be very, very expensive. And I would have one good shot at it. That's right, one clean execution. So I passed the time, another 200 years, until year 600, I'm not kidding you, 600, when I finally began making moves at the metropolis of my dreams. With over four million simoleons, we had filled our coffers. 600 years of ad hoc fire departments. 600 years of garbage lying in the streets. Air pollution. Homeschooling. But it was highly profitable. My first act in the new plan was to, um, destroy the entire town. Formulate an elaborate Venn diagram of schools, elementary and high a robust system of water pipage, and replan the entire town bit by bit with residential and commercial zones. Those made the juicy core. On the outskirts, I situated all the pollution so that it would be, um, uh, uh, others, other people's problems and not ours. Things were going splendidly, and the smooth-brained citizens were gaining wealth and getting smarter and smarter. But as is the law with all progress, anytime you want to build something nice, someone's rights need to be taken away. I'm not saying I make the rules, I just n understand them. The fact was that the town was spending too much money, and we still had space for denser housing, but there was too much air pollution to build skyscrapers on the outskirts of the city. So I destroyed all the factories where people were working while they were inside, and raised taxes to prevent them from ever coming back. In a phrase, it worked. Pretty soon, we had only clean, high-tech and manufacturing jobs. Five-head, wrinkly-brained people working in our industries, living in high-rise apartments, and buying lavish, expensive dinners to support the commercial industry. We privatized education, because ain't nobody got time for that. But by the year 641, I had a... Uh, admittedly a small existential crisis. We'd come all this way, but were we really still an island? After all, generation upon generation had seen nothing but dirt underfoot. So I came to the decision that I had to return to our spiritual island roots. We had done enough to the ocean by filling it with dirt. It was time to atone for my crimes by reconciling the edges. A decision which is notoriously the last one you'll ever make if you play SimCity 4. How could this happen? Whenever I play SimCity, I feel torn between two competing, often divergent goals. The first one, doing a genuinely good job. Building a city that's actually profitable and sustainable, usually just flat land. I took a hard left into this one this time. And two, building a city that makes um, geographic sense with the surrounding regions. Maybe it was all doomed from the start. Reconciling the edges to make physical sense with neighboring grid squares is something I do that deeply pleases something in my soul. But, uh, it also causes catastrophic loss of human life to placate the ocean. I don't know why I did it. Maybe I did it just to say I did it. But I think in the end, I did it for you. Because I wanted to please you. Because I love you. I love you very much. Are you pleased now? Are you pleased with the screaming? With their unexpiated tears of agony falling down toward the underworld. 
I bet you are, you sick son of a bitch. Anyway, this has been a fun little experiment. A major thanks to my patrons, who are always willing to volunteer as firefighters shortly before I defund the department. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until next time, my friends. <laughs>